Hello everybody, welcome back to another shoelace special on the Zool channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Star Citizen controversy. Now this is a little bit unusual for what I do on the channel, but I figured that it was a good idea to clear this up for anybody who is uninformed about this. Um, I will be discussing most of the information, I'm going to try and keep this as unbiased as possible for the first half, and I will let you know in the second half when I want to give out my actual opinion. So let's get started. Now it all started on July 6th, 2015, when Derek Smart put up his opinion base over the Star Citizen series. Now, if you don't know, Derek Smart is the lead developer and he is the president of 3000 AD, a small independent company known for his space sims. He made games such as Battle Cruiser and Universal Combat and Line of Defense, all things that uh, have some merit towards them. So basically, he's a pretty experienced person within the space sim genre and he's just giving his uh, opinion base over the Star Citizen franchise. One of the main points that Derek Smart makes in the article is he brings up his own games a lot, such as the Universal Combat series and Battle Cruiser series, and he claims they have a large claim. So I actually was curious about this. I know that the uh, Universal Combat series is free on Steam, but I didn't have time to do that. So I just went onto Metacritic and quickly checked it out. Now this is what Universal Combat has on Metacritic. It's a 54, which is barely a passing grade, which isn't great on the uh, case for Derek Smart. Now, I did check out the Battlecruiser series, but it was all from user submissions, and they were all posted after the article, and were all zeros, so one could assume that it was the, uh, the White Knights getting on the bandwagon and trying to mark his game down, which is pretty bad, guys, don't do that. Um, as for the World Apart game, it is also still a very low Metacritic score. So, this is what we got to work with over what Derek Smart has contributed. Now, I'm not going to say that against what his opinions are. Regardless of how successful his games were, I'm sure that he has a valid opinion here because it, he is one of the founders of the space sim genre. Like, he is firmly planted in there, so I'm not going to take away his credibility here. However, at the bottom of his article, the point that Derek Smart is trying to make is that Chris Roberts pitched a game for $500,000 and they received tons more than they had originally planned. Right now they're sitting in around 90 million dollars in crowdfunding, which is crazy. They have the money that they requested. They promised a game for November 2014 and the game is still not out and essentially that's his big problem with it. He's saying that he should be able to get a return on his money if he doesn't feel like uh, the game's not going to come out and he's also saying that based off of the way that the crowdfunding has worked, it's based off of intangible goods that can't be used in game, they're just concepts for people. Yeah, the original milestone is way far beyond what they were originally promised, and the game is like pushed back until further notice, so that's his big problem with this. Another accusation that is being made from Derek Smart is the fact that Star Citizen is losing money. They're only spending like they're only bringing in around one million dollars but they're spending two million dollars at the same time so they're slowly burning through all of their crowdfunding which would be really bad if this were true but this can't be proven by any standard so what could be said here is that Derek Smart is very concerned about the implosion of this company now in the main escapist article written by Lizzie Finnegan a lot of different points are brought up some of which are some people siding with Derek Smart some of them are going against Derek Smart saying that he's attacking Star Citizen which he kind of is the article then goes on to explain about Smart's ask for a complete forensics accounting of Cloud Imperium games this will just make sure that all of the crowdfunded money is actually going towards the game and no alternative expenditure because that would be illegal and really bad Another point that Finnegan then brings up later on in the article is the fact that the Austin building in Cloud Imperium is going to be shut down soon. Employees are being let go and it doesn't look good. It's going to be shut down within the next year supposedly from these anonymous tips. It then goes on to uh, essentially attack Chris Roberts about his past problems such as being sued by Kevin Costner. His failed company in the first place. However, in certain people's views, this article is simply clickbait garbage. The second article to The Escapist is a little bit more incriminating with the seven anonymous sources that were brought here. After the eject ejected Star Citizen going to crash article, 
she reopened it with this, which is very, very harsh against Star Citizen. And I'm not just saying harsh in a bad way, I'm saying that this could be the death of it if any of this is true. And that is beyond certainty. Claims saying that some company men were racist and discriminated against blacks, other things saying that Chris Roberts funneled some of the money from the crowdfunding into his house, another one saying that Chris is incompetent in being able to build games, that he hasn't built one in 12 years, so he can't actually put forward and contribute anything towards this. Uh, it was a very toxic environment. People were hating each other, physically ill with racist slurs and comments, and Chris is very difficult to deal with. He's like the Steve Jobs of Cloud Imperium. He's just very hard to work for. Just very, very... Prof yeah, it's... Um, Harsh, harsh compliments made towards the people who actually go there. Now, because of the toxic work environment accusations, I decided to go to six different Twitter pages of all of the Star Citizen employees. Now, these are just six, so, you know, if you find one that actually does have any toxic uh, tweets that seem to indicate they're sad or distraught in some sort of way, link them to me so I can add an annotation in the video. Please keep in mind that two of these people are now ex-employees and four of these people are still current employees, so take that as you will. But from what I can tell here is people seem to enjoy their jobs. Like I'm seeing a lot of puns being posted, pictures of their work environment, live streams, tweeting about games and stuff. People, things that people don't normally do if they're really depressed or have huge anxiety. Now mind you, this is only six people. This can't possibly represent the entire company. But regardless, from what I'm currently seeing on these six Twitter pages, I'm not seeing very much evidence for an actual toxic work environment. Okay, this is the part of the video where I'm going to lay down my opinion piece, so just keep in mind that this is uh, Shoelace, okay? I know that a lot of you guys are getting me and Zool mixed up here. This is not Zool, this is Shoelace, so I'm just going to lay down my opinion here, and we can move from there. Now, when it comes to the Derek Smart article, it didn't really resonate with me, because Derek Smart, uh, apparently, on the internet, has a habit of attacking other people, and... Ever since he posted this article, he's been ruthlessly attacking Cloud Imperium games, which either to me looks like jealousy over the amount of crowdfunding that they've gotten, or it looks like some sort of egotistical rage that I just can't quite get behind. I don't trust many of his opinions, so let's just leave it at that. When it comes to the Escapist article, it can be said that the title is definitely clickbait. It's definitely trying to do that. Um, other than that, the article does have a few points in it, but the use of anonymous sources, I wouldn't say isn't exactly great. I just put, brought up this page, Routers. I don't know anything about journalism, but supposedly this is a good gold standard for it. And when it goes to allegations um, and continuous and vertiperative attacks, this is what it has to say. We can never allow our sources to make allegations, contentious statements, or vituperative attacks behind the cloak of anonymity. It weakens our credibility and gives the sources an opportunity to benefit at our expense. It is also fundamentally un unfair to the other party and thus bias so obviously not exactly the greatest thing okay now in router's methodology to reporting rumors it does stress the fact that we need to differentiate fact and rumor so what should be said is not what is happening or whether or not something is heard but it should be talking about the results and the effects of these type of rumors all right, now when it comes to the people at Cloud Imperium and uh, Chris Roberts himself, I don't know if any of the allegations made against them are true. It, it could be. It could be. I, I highly doubt it, but it definitely could be. Uh, if any of them are true, it's really bad for Star Citizen, because those are unacceptable things for people to be doing. Regardless of that, however, I don't see how any of them could be true. But let's keep in mind that Derek Smart does bring up a couple good points. Chris Roberts did say that the game was going to be coming out November 2014, and it is coming up to November 2015, which is a lot longer than he initially planned. I mean, it's not a new thing. GTA uh, for PC did take an extra two years, but that wasn't acceptable either. But I gotta keep in mind that they raised way more money than they ever planned for. And with that amount of money, I imagine that Chris wanted to push the boundaries of his game, which to me is acceptable. I would prefer it if we got more of a choice in the matter, but I was happy with the decision. Chris, uh, Chris is happy with the decision, obviously, and Derek Smart obviously wasn't. But, you know, that's his opinion, and he has the right to that. Um, there should be a refund system for the amount of money that people are funding into this game, because have to, people have to 
funnel in from 100 to 250 dollars per concept ship every single time they want to support the game which isn't the greatest system in the world and they should probably think of a better system like a Patreon page or something like that where you can just set the exact amount that you will want to contribute and that should be it. Please keep in mind that I don't know everything about this controversy because of how dense and toxic the entire forms are. It's just filled with people telling each other to kill themselves which is not cool guys. Don't do that. But yeah, if there are any uh, other pieces of information that I'm missing out here, or if you are actually one of the people involved in this controversy, like Lizzie Finnegan, Derek Smart, Chris Roberts, I'm happy to take whatever information that you're willing to throw at me, because that would be crazy if I got your guys' attention. But regardless, this is just my opinion piece, and if you have anything to add to it, please comment down below. I'd like to start up a bit of a discussion here. Uh, later on this week, I'll probably be releasing some sort of rant video over this whole controversy. And after that, nothing really much else. Alright guys, well I hope you all enjoyed the video. Keep in mind, once again, this is Shoelace. This is not Zool. Do not get mad at Zool. Get mad at Shoelace. Okay, and if you guys have anything else to say, please comment down below. Uh, in other words, uh, stay classy and obviously, have an excellent day. <laughs>